everyone, we're going to get started with our animal portraits and hopefully you can get super realistic with your detail and work and really push yourself to a new level. So, okay, images. I am trying very hard to get all my images on Canvas so you have access to all my photography. Um, we don't want to use an image off the internet because uh, then we're doing plagiarism. But I know that some of you don't have photos of animals or your parents have not taken a photo of an animal that you might want to use. Um, so I went to the Dallas Zoo last year and a couple years before that, and I took a bunch of pictures of all kinds of animals. And I want to give you artistic permission to use them. So you're welcome to use one of my photographs, or you're welcome to use one that you find uh, that you took or one of your family members took. Um, if you don't find any of that, you can use one from the internet, but I'm going to rephrase that. You can use some from the internet. So if you were drawing a lizard, then you might find like four or five of the same lizard and um, different poses and then take the pose from one of them, the color from a different one and the background from a different one and just kind of like use all four or five pictures to join into one image that you like. Okay, so these are just my notes so I don't forget. So I'm just going to zoom them, in, zoom them in so you can see. So in our presentation, we talk about composition and simplification, limiting focus, uh, rule of thirds and framing. When you pick your image, I want you to decide what do you want to do with it? Do you want to get simplified with it? Do you want to limit the focus and do blurry stuff around it? Do you want to follow the rule of thirds or do you want to do framing? So that's the first step you need. So here are two images that I printed off from my drive, photos that I took. And um, I love lizards. I think they have beautiful colors. So this one already has the blurring in it. Um, for my taste, that's a little bit too much background. So what I'm going to do is, um, before I do that, let me show you. This is the paper we gave you. Um, we gave you paper that measures roughly around 12 by 15 and 3 quarters. It's just different. Um, it's colored paper. When you look at it, it's got a little texture to it. And we put two of them in your kit. So I want you to pick whatever color you want. A lot of times the color that you want is determined by the animal that you pick. So you have those two to choose from. Uh, we put them on there because we really want you to practice. So what I want you to do is pick the color you want to use for your project and the color you don't like as much, practice on that one. So that's what you have on your kit. And of course, we can use a color pencil. So here's the first thing you need to decide. Either you print your photo or you um, work off your phone if you have a phone or you can work off your computer screen. Regardless, you're going to have to measure to get the proportions right. And in, so for this one... I would like to make sure my paper is vertical and I would like, I'm going to fold my paper like this and I'm going to fold to where I want. So here's what I have. I went and got a few of my pictures and I folded them. So when you look at, the, you saw the PowerPoint, you saw this photograph. One of the students used this photograph and they just drew it from the image that I, that they chose from my drive. I don't think it's the best composition. Uh, we talked about in your face, kind of really make these stand out and make them beautiful portraits. So if that student drew it like this, I would have drawn it like this. Only that much. That's how I would have drawn my paper. Um, I would have touched this side. I would have touched this side with the tail. This right here and then this right here acts as a framing device for my bird. And that's what I would have done. Now, that's right here with some kind of framing. Or you can get rid of this. And only keep this and the bird and get rid of all the background and do more like simplification. So that's an example of framing or simplification. Okay, how I left this and this for framing or how I'll get rid of that and I'll get rid of that and do only the bird with this trunk and then do simplification. So that's an example. This, the lizard I showed you a second ago, this is how I decided. With this one, I decided to go rule of thirds where um, you see my space is divided evenly. And then here it is. And there it is. My grid that we talked about in rule of thirds, I hope you can see that, that the eye lands right about at that intersection right there. I think eyes are beautiful, especially in animals because they're so rich. So that's how I'm going to do this one. And then I also chose this one. And this one, I love the natural framing that he had when he posed. And his arm frames his face this way and then the other arm goes this way. Because he was just relaxing and taking a nap and I thought it was beautiful. So this has natural framing. So this one, I took very little off the actual picture because that one wasn't really like that. So pick your picture. So now here's where we go into proportions. Now, um, I am going to measure these real quick. 
Okay, so I measured my stuff. So let's look at some numbers. The paper we gave you is 12 by 15 and a half. I mean, 15.75. I know it's a weird size. That's just the way it came out. But it's 12 by 15.75. So let's look at our pictures. Our gorilla is five inches by six and a quarter inches. So if I look at my 12 by 15 size, I can get two fives inside that 12, right? So I can get two fives, which is 10, that's 12. So I can get two fives. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to enlarge my gorilla by two. So this becomes 10 times 12.5. So if I multiply five by two, I get 10. And then if I multiply six and six and a quarter by two, I get 12 and a half. So that's my new size. That's proportionally. So on my paper, I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to mark off 10 this way and 12 and a half this way. So my paint gorilla, and I'm going quick, is going to be right here. That's where my gorilla is going to fit proportionally all this extra paper. If you don't have your proportions of your paper right to the proportions of your image, it's not going to work. So I'm going to do another one. My little lizard guy here, he's four and a half by five and a half where I wanted it. Because I'm doing it backwards instead of, you know, measuring. You're like, Michelle, why don't you just measure it four by five? Because I don't want to do that. I really want to focus on my composition and get really what I want. So that's why I'm doing it, my image first and then my paper. So four and a half by five and a half. Well, four goes into 12 three times, but then I have that half extra. So I decided that I'm going to multiply by two and a half, just two and a half. So I took my four and a half, multiplied it by two and a half on the calculator, and I got 11 and a quarter. And then five and a half times two and a half is 13.75, okay? 13 and three quarters. So right here, I'm going to measure my small side to 11.25. And then I'll measure my big side to 13.75, 13 and three quarters. Okay, so my, so my uh, lizard, if I were to draw it on this paper, it would be this much. Okay, that's how much paper I would have wasted, a little bit less. So I hope that's making sense. Let me do one more. Here's my bird, and this bird measures three by four. My paper is exactly 12 by 1575. So you can say, Mrs. Shaw, it's three by four, just multiply by four, and then you have your 12. But then I don't have enough here because four by four is 16, so I don't have enough. So I decided for my bird, I'm gonna multiply by three and a half because I can't quite do it with four because of my leftover paper. And I don't wanna cheat. You're thinking it's just a quarter of an inch, just leave it, pretend it's 16, but you can't because then your paper's gonna, your bird's gonna look weird. It's gonna be out of proportion. So I'm going to go three and a half. So if I get three multiplied by three and a half, I get 10 and a half. And if I get four multiplied by three and a half, I get 14. I hope that made sense on proportions. That's how you enlarge. Um, I'm going to start drawing the um, bird because I think that'll be easier just for a quicker video. I'm going to draw the bird. So let me measure out my paper to be 10 and a half by 14 so I can show you how to draw. All right, so here is my paper. I have three, three um, times four multiplied by 3.5 gave me 10 and a half by 14. So this is the size of my bird, this is the size of my paper. Now you have a couple options. You can create a grid on here and create a grid and then draw it and you'll be perfectly proportioned. Um, I would like to challenge you to do two different things for me. Um, I'm gonna put a grid here on half and then half this way and then divide this perfectly in four and make like a modified grid. Let me show you. So here's my grid, okay? I hope you can see that okay in the camera. And here's my grid on the bird itself. Here's what I want you to draw. It's called looking at your negative space. Um, it's a different way to draw when you get some image that's too complicated and you wanted to break it down into smaller pieces first. So you see right here, this right here is a straight line almost with a little bump and then around. And then there's a little much space before my actual um, grid line. So what I'm gonna do is, and this is about the middle, so here's about the middle. So all I'm gonna draw is this and that. Nothing else but that. That's my negative space. 
here at the bottom, I'm going to draw this little rectangle. So I'm going to go here, and it goes all to there. That's all that should be drawn in that quadrant. Right here, I have a line that goes straight up and then angle. So I'm going to go line, go straight up a little bit, and then the angle goes not down here, because notice, it's not the bottom, it's the side. So I'm going to go do that. Over here, I see this little square thingy. So here on the top, I'm going to do this kind of like square little thingy right there. It's not perfect yet, but it's kind of sort of there. And then here, I see a triangle. Here's about halfway point, And I see a triangle. That. Because I bet you this, drawing a triangle is way easier than drawing a bird. So I drew this triangle here, and I hope you can see it. I'm going to actually make it darker for you to see. Okay? On this side, what I see is a line up and then up. So I see an up and then that. That's what I see. Right here at the top, I see a just a little diagonal. So here, I'm just going to put a little diagonal that goes to here. I was talking to I wasn't paying attention. I was about to make the diagonal go up. So notice where it goes. So there's that. So now I can take this straight line and put a bump on it. If you look at this very carefully, it tells you exactly where your bird goes. It tells you that the tail is going to be here extending into your bird. It tells you that the belly is here and it's going to kind of connect to that. It tells you that the rest of the belly is here and you can start creating the face right there. And then it tells you where the head goes. I drew a couple of rectangles and a couple of triangles. And then that's called planning your page with negative space. Now I know that when I start drawing all the detail on my bird, my bird's not going to have a head that's too big or a stomach that's too little or the tail's too long. Now I know that everything's going to fit where it belongs. And that's planning your page. There's one other way to plan your page. And that's that. You just look at your image. And I'm not going to um, do a grid on this one. But you basically do the same thing. And you get just your negative space real quick. And you kind of just scribble it. And then you look at it and you're like, well, not really. That head's too big. And then you kind of just decide with a bunch of scribbles where everything's going to go. Like if I look at this, I know that my beak is not going the right angle. So now I can fix it. And I know that the belly is not round enough at the top and it's got to shrink down here. Now I realize that my trunk should be bigger right here. This is called planning your page just with scribbles where you scribble it on without before you add any detail. And then um, now that I know where everything's going to go, like the head is way too far over here. The head needs to be more here. But now I know how big the head has to be. Regardless of where it was going to be later, now I know where it has to be. So it's a very quick sketch. When you have your quick sketch, then you can start focusing on actual detail and actual drawing and start getting your stuff and then you erase what you don't need. That's a way to plan the page. This is some negative space with the grid system and how to plan your page. But the point is you plan everything before you start drawing. So this is where the video is going to stop. It's about planning. You know how to draw. You know that you need to focus on detail. You know you need to slow down. But this is a quick way to get something on paper first and then starting to add your details. That way you make sure you got the right proportions. Thank you.